in 1983, while a Turkish farmer was plowing his field, he came across a stone that was obviously man-made and took it to the Schanlurfa Museum. Years later, the German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt, who conducted research in the region, also mentioned this stone. Schmidt, who goes to see the stone in the museum storage room, immediately wants to go to the site where the stone was found. The next thing you know, the site of the world's oldest known man-made complex structures is uncovered. The year is 1994. There is a strange detail. As a result of surveys conducted by a group of archaeologists from Istanbul and Chicago universities in 1963, there was a report that the region contained structures from the Neolithic period. But there was no study. Göbekli Tepe dates back to the pre-pottery Neolithic period, 12,000 to 10,000 years ago. We are talking about dates so old that we should add the following in order to understand the state of mankind. Mankind has not yet invented the pottery. He was able to make the pots or tools he used from stone. In other words, he obtained the stone by breaking or carving it with stone or obsidian. One more note. We are 7,500 years older than the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, whose secrets are still unsolved. According to classical archaeology, man at that time had not even built his shelter yet. He doesn't know how to grow crops, they just hunted and tried to survive. It is not even known whether they spoke. If they did, it is a mystery what kind of language they spoke. It is estimated that they live in groups of 30 or 40 people. I never agree with this point of view. This is the point of view that degrades human beings and pushes our ancestors into ignorance in caves. As if to prove that this one-legged perspective is completely wrong, this structure is discovered. Human beings, who are said not to be able to speak, who cannot even make a drinking vessel for themselves, create gigantic structures. And they do it in a certain order, with absolute intelligence and motivation. They are collectively thinking about something. Or maybe only one thinks, and the others follow. They feel something beyond the vital needs of food, protection, or shelter. They act on these thoughts. And in order to fulfill these desires, as a result of a long and laborious work, they first start building in the area we call Gobekli Tepe today. And then they accomplish something more laborious. They cover up what they have done. We still don't know what they had in mind. But when we look at the excavation site, and see that a very small part of it has come to the surface, we can say that we have a high chance of finding answers to these questions in the near future. Then let the video begin. The site of what we call Gobekli Tepe consists of a series of rectangular and circular circles supported by massive T-shaped columns, many of which are the oldest known megaliths in the world. Many of the columns are decorated with wild animal reliefs and details. For its date, the craftsmanship is truly breathtaking. It was buried under a hill covering a calculated 22 acres of land. The archaeological site is incredibly large. And although only a small percentage has been excavated so far, it has fundamentally changed the way we look at the known origins of human civilization in the distant past, just after the Ice Age. Then it was discovered that Gobekli Tepe was just one of dozens of sites in the region. This, of course, was even more surprising. With the discovery of all these hills, we have an even more interesting case study. Scientists in Turkey called the whole area Stone Hills and presented it to the world as such. As a result of the findings in Gobekli Tepe and other hills, there was first a radical change. The end of the Paleolatine and the beginning of the Neolatine, as taught to us in history books, changed. Neolithic went back a few thousand years. In relation to Gobekli Tepe, many of you have seen pictures of circular structures and finely decorated T-shaped stuns. But as you go deeper into the details, you will realize that there is much more to it than that. Klaus Schmidt, the German archaeologist who discovered Gobekli Tepe, described the circular sections found in the hilly area. They were given codes A, B, C, and D. The whole world continues to call it this way. Now let's take a look at some of the finds. Number one is the human headstone. Many of you have seen Gobekli Tepe's famous vulture stone or stun number 43. 
but not everyone knows that there is another vulture depicted here. This one is from the oldest phase of Gobekli Tepe, from the best preserved structure, Circle D. Archaeologists say that during the filling and sealing of the circle, some objects were deliberately placed next to the stuns, and this stone slab is just north of stun number 18, one of the central stuns in the circle. It shows a large predator that some say is a hyena. It is very likely to be a vulture with a very prominent beak and open wings. Above the hyena are the legs of another animal, and then there is what looks like a human head, clearly separated from the body. It is unclear whether this head is part of a narrative scene about animals, but it stands out as a unique find at Gobekli Tepe. Number 2. Bone Spatula We see this small bone object that is 5,3 cm high and measures 1, 9 by 0, 3 cm. These are called bone spatulas. Because of their appearance, some associate these small bone spatulas with the famous T-shaped stuns of Gobekli Tepe. Indeed, at first glance, they do indeed appear to have a T-shaped form. However, not everyone agrees with this interpretation. Because it is easy to make simple comparisons when we really lack an understanding of pre-pottery Neolithic art. Maybe they are T-shaped stuns, and maybe they are not. But this small find has got archaeologists talking about it for a long time. Number 3 is the dead Auroch stun. The image of the Aurochs on stun number 66 is mesmerizing. The side view of the Aurochs is beautifully rendered here. However, the engraving is crudely engraved and poorly preserved. Nevertheless, the clear descriptions give us important information and clues. As you can see, the legs are bent, and the tongue is hanging out. Many researchers believe that they wanted to show us that the animal was dead. This reminds us of a similar depiction of a wild aurochs at the site of Chatal Hoyuk in the heart of Anatolia. There too, the aurochs are seen to be sticking out their religion. In both depictions, much smaller animals are depicted beneath them, as if to show the sheer size of the animal. The somewhat rough lines of the carving here have prevented it from being recognized as a well-known piece as archaeologists consider it to be a less important stone slab used only for sealing. This incredible stonework was discovered in 2009 and reminds us of the totem poles of North American places. It was found on the northeastern wall of a quadrangular structure built in the second phase of Gobekli Tepe, the pre-pottery Neolithic period. Today we can see this pole in the Archaeology Museum in Turkey. One, nine meters high and has three elements in a row. The top part is a predator. Maybe a bear, but most likely a big cat. But the animal's face is completely damaged. Below the head, a short neck, arms and hands are clearly visible. The arms are holding another fragmented head, probably a human being, and remind us of the statue of a leopard on the back of a man found at Karahan Tepe. This statue in Gobekli Tepe may be showing us the same thing. The second figure has human arms with hands placed at the waist. Just like we see in the T-shaped suns, there is another person under the arms and hands, and fortunately his face is completely preserved. Underneath the hands is an unidentified object, and some believe it depicts the person giving birth. Number 5. The Lumbar Stone Surrounded by Protective Monsters this is one of my favorite finds of Gobekli Tepe. It is a monumental porthole stone measuring 3 by 3 meters with two openings. If you ask what a porthole is, it's a kind of window. As you can see, it is richly decorated with three half-meter sculptures with four legs. The monsters from this sculpture are identified as bulls, rams, and wild keelis. We can also see a one and a half meter long snake in high relief. On the sides of the window, circular gaps stand out. We don't know at the moment whether they were just ornaments or had some other function. The stone was not in place when it was found, so we don't know its original connection. However, it is thought that it was once used to properly protect the entrance of an important building. Number 6. Stone Buttons Beads and buttons are found directly opposite the stone hills. But we can easily compare the buttons at Gobeklitepe with more modern examples. They are usually made of green stone. They were probably used on the person and are common throughout the site. The intricacy of these tiny pieces is beautiful and surprising. 
Some of them are perfectly shaped with very small holes running through them. They look as if they were made with the help of a drill. We still don't know exactly what their function was. We can only speculate. But once again we see that we need to question some of our prejudices, as well as admire the ingenuity of such tiny objects. Number 7. Human and Animal Figure Some small objects continue to amaze us. For example, this sculptor, measuring just 5,1 cm by 2,3 and 2,7 cm, is a surface find from the top of the hill. We see a person sitting on an unknown object with his legs drawn towards the torso. There is an erect phallus between his legs, and we can see a four-legged animal sitting on his left shoulder. Almost all of the stone sculptures and artifacts in Gobekli Tepe are made of limestone, but this object is made of green nephrite. Maybe it was a necklace, maybe it was once worn on a support, but it is certainly a unique and unusual find at Gobekli Tepe. Number 8. The unfinished T-shaped column. Today you see this very eroded pillar, 7 meters long and about 20 cubic meters in volume, partly cut out of the bedrock with Gobekli Tepe in the background. It is a piece that we will find almost no information about what it was built for and the mystery of why it was never finished. Number 9. Bucranium Lumber Stone. This incredibly ornate stone window or hole, surrounded by two foxes, apparently depicting the moment of the jump, was found in the north wall of what we call Circle B. A bucranium was placed over the hole. Let's show this photo as an answer to those who ask what a bucranium is. It is an ornament carved from an ox skull to decorate some windows or doors, especially wreaths. At this stage it is not known whether this stone marked the entrance to a building, or whether the carved animals were simply protecting a niche or entrance. Number 10. Stone human heads and masks. Dozens of stones, human masks and heads, some weighing up to 2 kilograms, dating from the 9th to 8th millennia, have been discovered. Experts believe they had a cultic purpose, and similar examples are found in many parts of the Middle East. Some artifacts clearly resemble masks and have a concave inner surface with a crudely carved human face on the reverse. Some are only four and a half centimeters in size and are therefore miniature objects. They are much smaller than a life-size depiction. Most of the heads and masks seem to have been deliberately placed in the filling of the space, usually close to the central suns. They were placed inside the main circle, as if to say to the people of the time that we are closing here. But we are with you with our eyes and our heads. Yes, after this section on the finds, we would like to tell you about an ambitious thesis that has recently been discussed in some circles. As you know, there is a theory that has recently become widespread and accepted by scientists. It is called the theory of origin from Africa. In other words, the first human beings originated in Africa and spread all over the world from there. There is strong evidence to support this thesis. These are primarily DNA evidence and archaeological finds. There is another theory that contradicts this widespread belief. That the origin was not in Africa, but in Australia. There are DNA studies that can support this theory as well. The origin from Australia may seem crazy to some at first glance. But it should not be forgotten that many such controversial theories have been proven in recent years. I must admit that when I first read it, I thought it was quite exaggerated. But after some research I found the story quite interesting and wanted to present it to you. However, if we do not stick to the classical patterns here, that is, if we think with an open vision, we can see that there are very different points. The thesis put forward in this context is of course open to discussion in terms of the definition and interpretation of symbols. Gobekli Tepe is the largest and most ancient megalithic complex in the ancient world. There may be other megalithic sites from more ancient times, but none match the scale of complexity and advanced knowledge described in this site. Gobekli Tepe is a complex of at least 200 T-shaped stone pillars some of them up to 6 meters high and weighing up to 22 tons. Some of the columns, like the ones we showed at the beginning of the video, are covered with reliefs. The physical features of the Gobekli Tepe archaeological site amaze researchers in many ways. For example, 
Its 12,000-year-old columns have stood for 10,000 years beneath a huge pile of earth and rocks placed on top of them. Surprisingly, this site was deliberately buried in antiquity. The stones of Gobekli Tepe speak, but only to those who understand the language. So these megaliths bear the signature of ancient symbols of a lost civilization from which they emerged. The sacred art of ancient Australia may provide a link between the founders of Gobekli Tepe and ancient Australian symbolism. In an original photograph taken around 1922, we see a match between the ancient symbol on the chest of a sorcerer and an ancient symbol in the Gobekli Tepe presentation. The man was a respected healer of a now extinct Australian culture. In the photo, we see Gaia, the war mage, who was a great medicine man in Central Australia, as indicated by the markings on his body. This man both taught the tribes the mysteries and healed them. He is called a sorcerer or a healer, but more accurately he is called the keeper of ancient knowledge, who knows more about the ancient world than we will ever know. In the so-called Circle C, in column number 28, we find a series of symbols normally reserved for the most sacred artifacts in ancient Australia, called Charinga Stones. It is suggested that the meaning of this symbol is two people sitting together to share knowledge. The only difference between the symbol on the pillar and the symbol on the human body is that the two lines do not meet in the center circle. Charinga Stones are considered containers enclosures for spiritual energy associated with creative beings or sky heroes descending to earth. Incredibly, the full column in which this Sharinga symbol appears is described as a silhouetted representation of a humanoid deity. For a better understanding of the subject, I must tell you about a mysterious phenomenon. There is a glacial period that scientists still don't know why. It's called the Young Dryas. It happened about 13 zero years ago. This is hard data, so it's not a theory. The world was about to emerge from the last ice age, but then it entered a cold period again, quite rapidly compared to normal climatic conditions. Some recent studies attribute this sudden cooling, referred to as the Young Dryas, to a collision with a comet or asteroid. Scientific analysis of ice cores from Greenland and other evidence from around the world suggests that the impact of a comet may have triggered a period of soil cooling that lasted about a thousand years. This period was characterized by a sudden intense cooling 12,800 years ago, followed by an equally sudden and intense warming 11,500 years ago, and a sudden rise in seawater. Archaeological evidence suggests that the earliest global catastrophe led to the near extinction of plants and animals as a community at both ends. Other evidence suggests that the cooling period was an opportunity for some groups of people to band together and develop agriculture, leading to great leaps in technological innovation and social development. Between the low sea levels of this mini ice age, Australia and Papua New Guinea merged into a large continent known as Sahel. The islands of Southeast Asia also joined together on a landmass known as Sunderland. These places were two of the most biologically productive regions in the world during the last ice age, along with the Persian Gulf, a lush green valley, and a virtual Garden of Eden. It is in the light of this information that pillar number 43 in Circle D, which we have just mentioned, is interpreted as providing clues to an ancient comet impact that changed human history, also known as the Vulture Stone of Gobekli Tepe. Researchers have found evidence in carvings on an ancient stone pillar at Gobekli Tepe of a comet striking the Earth at about the same time as the beginning of the Young Dryas period. The pillar seems to have served as a vehicle to commemorate a catastrophic event. Perhaps the disintegration of a comet and the impact of its debris on Earth caused a sudden environmental catastrophe across the globe. The massive destruction and loss of life may have been intended, they say. A team of researchers fed similar images carved into the suns into a supercomputer to determine whether they were linked to constellations. In doing so, they uncovered relationships between the symbols on the sun and astronomical symbols in the sky from 10,950 BC. The image of the vulture corresponds to the constellation Cygnus of Greek mythology. The fact that those people took the time and effort to create the symbols on the pillar 
may indicate the trauma of experiencing a global catastrophe. Researchers have suggested that the carvings on the pillar were made to document the catastrophic event, and that the temple could have been an astronomical observatory. They also report finding evidence of changes in the Earth's axis of rotation, as a result of the comet impact. The megalithic builders of Gobekli Tepe witnessed the collapse of their civilization and decided to bury their work. What we see today is perhaps where this enormous culture emerged. Perhaps Gobekli Tepe is a monument to the experiences of these people who were forced to migrate after floods and other disasters. There are researchers who like to think that the animal images on the stones of Gobekli Tepe represent an important effort by shamans to summon the spirits of extinct animals. Images of snakes are everywhere at Gobekli Tepe. Birds are another animal species well represented at Gobekli Tepe. Big flightless birds. Elsewhere, column 56 in section H, where we see representations of numerous large-bodied birds with particularly long necks, is decorated with reliefs of wild animals, reptiles, and birds. These bird images are almost identical to the emus represented in rock art in Australia. These birds could be genomes and giant emu-like birds that became extinct about 30,000 years ago. Looking at a rock art depiction of genomes from a site in northern Australia, the similarities are immediately striking. The emu has a very special place in ancient astronomy, associated with the dark rift of the Samanian. Gobeklitepe is not a solitary anomalous site existing outside a larger complex. Archaeologists are surveying nearly 40 archaeological sites that share the cultural signature observed at Gobeklitepe. These discoveries cover a large area of Mesopotamia. Scientists have also identified a correlation between the distribution of ancient sites and the presence of wheatgrass. There has been, and still is, considerable debate about the purpose of Gobeklitepe's construction. Mainstream scholars tend to suggest that it was a ceremonial site. Others argue that the abundance of silhouetted animals in the tunes is certainly reminiscent of shamanistic traditions. The academic's strongest argument is that some form of avian shamanism was observed by the local culture. Some of the Gobekli research team went so far as to speculate that crane dances may have been performed here. Ancient people may have passed down the secret history of early civilization through comet strikes, volcanic eruptions, ice ages, solar storms and other global catastrophes. When glaciers melted and sea levels rose, humans were forced to move. Then, on the continents they reached, they may have been forced to compete with Neanderthals, aquatic people, and even archaic people. So maybe the builders of Gobekli Tepe were displaced people from the Persian Gulf, Sunderland, Saho, or most likely a mixed group of refugees who decided to rebuild their culture in a new country, away from the rising seas. There is of course much more to say about Gobekli Tepe.